that there. How are you? It is Tuesday, January 19th. Today would have been my mom's 95th birthday. I've got good genes. <laughs> I've got really good genes. So I am so glad that you are here to join me on our new project. It is called, um, let's see, we had to struggle for the title of this thing. Uh, look, let me look at my notes. Um, um, oh, the birdhouse quilt. <laughs> And in this, in this class, you're going to learn all different ways to applique. Plus, we're going to kick it off with some piecing. Hey, Margo. So I want to let, I have to kind of, you know, kick the can for five minutes while everybody gets on. And uh, I would say it's beautiful here. We've got a high wind event going on. And it's not like a hurricane. I mean, winds can get up to 70 or 80, but it's like, and then it stops like that. So uh, to kick the can for a few minutes, John and I watched this movie. I can only take it in pieces and I'll tell you why in a moment. It's called My Octopus Teacher and I believe it's on Netflix. I'm not 100%. You can Google that and find out. And it's about a guy who uh, was a cinematographer or an editor. I don't know. He burned out and he ended up going underwater this is like a true story okay and he befriends an octopus yeah and the photography there are cinematography is out of this world out of this world I've never seen anything like this I if I recall he was in the south South Africa is where he was doing his thing and he put this together and honestly people it is phenomenal absolutely phenomenal the reason I can only take about half see, I, I'm watching it in three installments I believe it's an hour and a half is because I'm not a real confident swimmer and even though he befriends his octopus it's awfully slimy to me so when the you know suction cups get on him you're like going Wah! you know but it is really, really good. I think it just dropped in the last week or so. My octopus teacher. Okay, so Carol, you just saw it. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's just unbelievable that it's like under the water is a whole nother world that honestly is more visually intense than our world. It's just amazing. So here's what you need to do to get the pattern and we only have up now the background so you're going to print this out all right and it's how you do the background and i'm going to talk a little bit about that right in you know starting now and how you're going to find it is you're going to go to the quiltshow.com which is the mothership which is where we drop new shows every other week someone the other day confused this for being the official the quiltshow.com no, this is just uh, an octopus leg. <laughs> so at thequiltshow.com, we have new shows that roll out every other week. And right now we have a master's class. And for that, at the end of last year, we had a master class on applique. So you may want to check that out too. You guys, there's so many different ways to do applique. And I've said this now, this will be the third time. If you don't like applique, that tells me you haven't found the right shoes. You know, if it hurts your foot, you haven't found the right brand, the right shoes. So to get this pattern, here is where you're going to go. And I'm watching the numbers. We're way down today. I'm taking tomorrow off because I want to see the inauguration. I, the thing about the inaugurations that I've always loved, always, are to see what the first lady's wearing. That's how deep I am. When Michelle Obama walked down Pennsylvania Avenue in that green suit, it was like, whoa, I haven't seen that color green before. And then it became a commonplace color. Well, in fact, I'm looking at it right now on my quilt. It was this color. And I believe, well, kind of, a, maybe it was this color. It was this one. Yeah, that's yellow. It was this one. And they then coined it lemongrass green. And then when Melania came out in that blue suit, oh, that color, oh, 
that color. So I'm excited to see that. That's the that's my that's that's why I'm not doing this tomorrow. I want to see what they're wearing. Okay, so to get this pattern, you're gonna to go to thequiltshow.com, and you're gonna to go to learn. You're gonna go. It's on the top bar. Then you're gonna to go to projects. All right. And then you're going to go to view this project. It'll show you the quilt, but then there's a big thing that says view this project. Click that, scroll down, and there it is. We don't have the shapes up yet, but we've got the base, which is what we have to build first. So let me talk a little bit about the bundle. I think we have like six left. What I did to make the background was I pulled out the these yellows and greens and you can see that primarily it's green but i didn't have enough green so i started throwing in a little bit of yellow so let's get back and take a look at it so you can see it's primarily green but then little shots of yellow and actually i think those are kind of happy surprises if you want to get right down to it and what i did was i cut three different width strips i cut two inch cut cut two inch, two and a half, and three. And that's how you got all these random uh, strip sizes here. I did end up with extras right here. I am going, I am saving them. Don't throw them away. I am saving them and I'm going to piece them and use this as my binding. I think that would be really, really cute with this, all right? Then what you want to do, it's so funny, Mary Kay and Lucas called up yesterday and they go, the pattern's wrong. Oh, it's right now because of Mary Kay and Lucas. But in the end, in the end, before you sew on the border, you want to make sure I get this right, Mary Kay. It was hilarious. You want to make sure that this measures 32 and a half raw, finishes at 30, and at 40 and a half raw and 40 and a half raw 40 inches finish so essentially it's 32 by 40 and the beauty of that size is that these four inch finished pinwheels will just fit in perfectly now you don't have to do you don't have to do this you guys you could do whatever you want let's say you loved churn dash let's say you love whatever you you could make blocks there just to make sure it finishes off finished 32 by 40 and then you're not going to have an issue with the pinwheels so if you are going to use your own fabric i would strongly suggest that you go with either solids or things that read like solids you know like how they have those tone on tone prints if you get this is my opinion now there's always someone to prove me wrong always but if I were going to my stash, I would want stuff that doesn't pop out and scream at you so that the bird houses and the flowers and the little birdies could be what, I, what you focus on. The other thing, this is in progress. I want you to see that this is in progress. I, I shared on Monday, yesterday, that I tried a new applique technique and it just was the worst. And so I'm picking things off. And I'm, I'm not even going to tell you what it was because it was so stupid I shouldn't have done it. Anyways, whoopsie. Yeah, it's not sewn down yet. <laughs> so there's that. Now what I, oh, the other thing I want you to know, I'm very, very excited. I'm feeling very technologically savvy. I've got two cameras today. <laughs> so I'm going to sew and I'm going to uh, cut. I'm going to press, whatever. I'm going to go to ground zero, all right, on, on pinwheels because I know we have a lot of new people and I'm seeing that the numbers aren't there so people don't know we're doing this. Maybe we'll post this again tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So if you're watching this tomorrow, it's what we did Tuesday. <laughs> so John can figure out that one. Okay, let's make, let's make uh, pinwheels. Okay, so I am so impressed with this. There are several ways pinwheels are made of half square triangles, right? And in the case of this particular quilt, you want two inch finished half square, two inch finished half square triangles to make a four inch pinwheel. 
Now, in the olden days, you would just cut your square at two and seven eighths and then cut it corner. I know the little bird flew off. It did, Jeannie. <laughs> Where am I out of here? And I want more birds on mine too, all right? Uh, what I would do is I would cut this at two and seven eighths and then I would cut it corner to corner, diagonal, and then I would just stitch it, all right? That is not, for me, the preferable way to do it because when you are stitching here, you do have the opportunity that this bias will will definitely stretch on you. And then your quarter square, then your half square triangles turn out really weird. So the next option is to do this, is you cut your two and seven eighths in square, all right? I use a friction pin and I draw corner to corner and then I go to my machine and I sew a quarter inch on each side. I, I just I just have to show off, okay? <laughs> now, to sew a quarter, now there's a couple things you can do here. First of all, I can use my presser foot, all right? Let me push this out a little bit. I can use my presser foot and just there's my quarter inch right there. But I have fallen in love with this, uh, what's it called, Sew Steady. And down here, here, here's the center line right here. And then right here is where I lead. So I'm not even watching up in this area. I'm watching down here. I have to tell you something funny. I was working on my face yesterday. Whoa, pay attention. I was watching there, not there. And I was doing more quilting. And I, my quilting was just stinky. I mean, it was just horrible. I thought, what is the problem? It was herky-jerky and all that. I had forgotten to put this thing back on my bed. It had gotten dirty, and so I went and washed it. All you have to do is just wash it off with warm water, and it was drying in the sink. So that was the problem, as I didn't have this on. So this thing not only helps you with piecing, but it's got the type of surface that you exactly want for when you're machine quilting. So there we go. Are you impressed? Let me go back to the other camera. I am. <laughs> so where's my rotary cutter? You know, if I'm sitting here showing off like this, you can bet your doggone dollar something's going to get screwed up. I really wish I had a ruler here, but I'm... Oh, the other thing I'm going to do, and I learned this from Mary Marianne Fawns, and I'm, I'm really going through details here. Let me move this up here. She strongly believes in setting seams. It, it like locks the stitches together. And so that's fine. I'm going to set my seam and set my seam. And then I am going to cut it. Well, that looks bad. Corner to corner. You know what? I got to go back and check this. I was showing off so much that I think I may have not done this top right. And of course, now I'm going to go with it. Okay. It's like it looks a little wonky. Uh, excuse me while I grab a ruler to cut with. I, I really don't want to cut without a ruler. I'm wondering if you can hear the wind outside the house. It's wicked. Yesterday, I didn't even go for a walk because it was like um, I would end up with an allergy attack. All right, so I'm going to go and I'm going to cut it corner to corner. Open my rotary cutter. And then I'm going to press it to the dark side. All right. You would need, you need four of these to make a pinwheel. When I press, if I'm really being diligent, is I will take my little antique iron and put it on top. You can use, when I'm at the cabin, I use a tea kettle. And that just helps solidify the seams one more time. But now another way to do it are these star singles. And we use these in the Christmas project. And I have to tell you, I really like it because out of this alone, you're gonna get one, two, you're gonna get two pinwheels out of it, all right? 
and what you want to buy we have them at the tqs store or if you have them in your stash you want the ones that say two inches you want the two inch that's the finished size that it reflects on the star singles so i line this all up if you want you could drop a couple little pins in if you wanted i'm going to find number one which is right there and I'm going to go in the direction the other that the arrows go. The other thing is when you're doing your star singles, tighten up your stitch a little bit, okay? Because you're going to have, like paper piecing, you're going to have to pull the stitches out or pull the paper out. So here we go. Try and stay on the line. In fact, stay on the line. <laughs> Try, just do it. I am using my 60 weight up top and I am using my um, 80 weight in the bobbin I use I only use 80 weight in my bobbin always 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 and you get a much more accurate seam now what I'm going to tell you while I'm sewing this is I am going to sew the border on before I'm going to do the inside green body and then I'm gonna make all of these um, pinwheels and then I'm going to sew it on so I have a completed quilt top without applique. Then what I'm gonna do, I keep overshooting, then what I'm gonna do is when I have the pinwheels sewn on, right around the outside edge, I will stay stitch it less than a quarter inch. And that's so that my little seams don't come apart on my pinwheel. Now, why am I doing that? Why? Because the bigger your quilt is, the more you have to wrestle it underneath your uh, machine, right? The reason I'm doing it that way is for twofold. Here's the cliffhanger. So let me change cameras, and I hope I hope it's the cliffhanger for you too. The reason I'm doing it that way is because, okay, now I'm gonna cut on the solid lines. Two things. One, I want, might want my applique to flop out into my border. In fact, I'm pretty darn sure I'm gonna have those uh, flowers go out into the border. But more than that, is that when you start appliquing, the inside is going to shrink. It just naturally happens with applique. So in fact, when Mary Kay was helping me with the instructions, I got out my tape measure and it wasn't measuring properly. And that's because the applique had started to shrink the uh, inside. But since the border's on already, it doesn't matter. So I would highly recommend you sew it on first. And I know that's a little kind of weird, but that's what I would do. See how I'm just cutting on the solid lines. I love these things. And you get a ton of them in a package too. All right, so then what I'm gonna do, I have to take this off. And that's why I tightened up my stitch. Just like this. This is what you do when you, when you're, when you, when you wanna pay attention to what you're watching on TV. You just sit and do this. And yes, it makes a mess. Uh-oh, look what just happened. I didn't tighten up my stitch enough. Okay, so what am I going to do? What am I going to do? See how that came undone? I'm gonna go back and sew that right now before I forget about it. I probably, what's, what's my stitch like that? 2.10, maybe it should be at two. Come on, little guy, feed in. we go and then maybe I need to fold it a little bit more maybe I need to take off this side first gosh you'd think this is my first rodeo or something okay I want that off just comes right off and then I'm gonna go set the seams and I'm going to press it Okay, so let's make move this out here now. 
to the pressing area. I'm going to set the seams. The ghost of Marianne Bonds. <laughs> she couldn't, I tell you, it was so funny. You know, it's so great is that uh, she and I, as well as Eleanor Burns, I, I I just love those guys. They're They're just the best. And I guess you could say we're competition, but we're not because we're all in this together. And all we want is for the quilting world to succeed. And, you know, there's so much to learn out there. Now, look at this little trick I do. I go like this. All right. See how I'm just layering them? I can be this cavalier if there are not exposed biases. There we go. Here we go. And then now, I know these are going to measure the right size. But when I'm doing it, um, you know, without the star singles, at this point, I would take my ruler and make darn sure that these are measuring at two and a half. So I know they are because I use the star singles. In fact, they're stinking right on the money. All right. Then what you can do is you can cut off these little bunny ears. And if you have any questions, John can bring them in to me. I'll go over again where you find this on the site. And Kristen, actually Kristen is in Crap Napa today. You know, the extended one that they did. Oh, it was so good. It was just goodness. Now, one thing with your pinwheels. Let me make sure. Yeah. Make sure that you do this correctly. Make sure that every single pinwheel, it, see, no, is aligned exactly like this. And if you want, you could even take a piece of paper, draw a square, and then make a X through it, and then like color it in where the dark is and just use that to lay it out on. Because trust me, that's really easy to goof up. But the interesting thing is that when you do it, like when it is correct, you can just go like this and just and just peace till the cow, cows come home, all right? So the first thing I have to do is align these two guys perfectly right there. And I know I've done this before, but there's nothing wrong with repeating things to get people off to a good start. I think sometimes we have to like, okay, okay, step back, I'm getting too sloppy. At least I can speak for myself. So there we have, that's aligned up. I wonder if I can even get that in a little bit better. Yeah. And then these pins are uh, from Quilter Select. They're glass head, so they don't melt under your iron. They are super sharp, so they slide right in there. And I'm going in an eighth before and an eighth after that seam line. And I, that's exactly where I'm going to be sewing. Okay, questions? No, it's two people with suggestions. Okay, I got some suggestions. Start ripping from the middle and then down. Okay, oh, that's Deb Tucker's method. Okay, I wondered that. Okay, so when you take it off, when you take it off, start ripping from the middle. That Duh, that's exactly right. Um, and if you set the seams first, it will all tear easier. Well, look, I've got some star single people here. Thank you. All right, so let me do this one because then I'm going to go over and sew. You know, it's funny when I was tearing them, get off there. Um, I was thinking, I wonder if I start in the center. So thank you. I mean, I am new to these. I really am. It was the Christmas quilt that, or the holiday quilt that really got me turned on to them. Because typically when I sew or when I piece half square triangles, I'm doing super scrappy things. And so I would use the previous way that we did it. Okay, that looks good. So let's go over to the sewing machine. And, okay, now, here we've got this mat again. On my machine, on my machine, and this is a Bernina 765, and I don't know what brand you're on, but just look and see if there's a little mark right there on the throat plate. That is your quarter inch. This is just a safety belt in my book. 
and I make sure that I line this this so steady mat exactly up to that thing right there all right I think we have these in stock we have the orange ones are smaller the teal one is good for machines like this the larger one now you really shouldn't sew over I'm gonna go back stitch just because I know I didn't start at the edge Oh, the other thing at this point, I want my stitch length to go back to regular in case I have to tear out. That was a good save. Here we go. Yeah, I'm having to pick off. Oh, come on. What? Loosen up my presser foot. I'm having to pick off some of those daisy petals and oh, God. Oh, what just happened? Okay. This is why most people record stuff in the job video. Watch, I'm watching right down there. Also, you can put a little glue stick in there to help so it doesn't scoot. I forgot about that. What's the next question, John? I'm just sewing away. These are about the backgrounds. Uh-huh. You just are all the strips the same size. No, I'll, I'll you repeat come up that. With color? I will come up with that. And now I now I'm screwed. Okay. The other thing is if if this gets turned, like if I do that, it's going to screw up. So you want them all to march in at the same angle. All right? And I am going to put a little glue stick down here. My little fabric glue stick by Quilter Select. You know, the other thing, I'm sewing over where the pins are under. But if that makes you nervous, just take them out, you guys. I'll go over the strips, uh, the center strips and the colors um, when I get done with this. I don't want to stop in the middle of this. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Okay, now you just say a little prayer right here. Yes, that's exactly how you want it. Yes, I thought for a minute it wasn't, but I nailed it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go over and we're going to press these seams in the same direction. Again, I can just stack them up and just press, press, press. All right. So, okay. Okay, Marianne. <laughs> I need to talk to her. I need to, I need to talk to her. That's the bummer. One of the big bummers of this COVID is... I don't have a lot of local friends, but I have a lot of friends that are on the road and we'd like run off and have lunch together. Like Jenny Byer and I all, we have a standing date whenever there's a market and we go hide somewhere. Oh, that thing's not on. There we go. And then set it. More questions? Okay. Do I need to take off the stove so steady to change the bobbin? Yeah, I'll show you how I do that. Okay. In a minute. So now let's go back to this. The sew steady before I sew, you simply roll it back like this and then you change it. And it does get dirty, you guys. It does. And so that's when you just take it to your kitchen sink and just with water, rinse it off and then it'll stick up good again. All right. So now, you know, my iron wasn't hot. I have to say, I'm so impressed with those teachers at Crap Day. I've been doing this for six hours. All right, so here we go. We're very happy with that. You do want to use good pins. I mean, of course, I love my Quilter Select. Uh, Clover's pretty darn, Clover's very good. Bowen's very good. Uh, you don't want a flower head pin. You want extra fine glass head pins, and I don't even like the extra long ones. Like, you don't want this kind for the cartwheel that I'm going to show you right now. I mean, do I own them? Yeah, I just pulled it out of my pin cushion. But and I, but also, not only do I not care for this, for what I'm going to show you, when they get long like this, for when I'm doing something this minute, it can cause a little more problems. I mean, they're beautiful pins, but not for this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in see that right up there the seam goes this way and it goes this way 
I'm going to come right in the back at the X, but then I'm going to turn it over and make 100% sure it is exactly at the tip. I'm trying to, or, or, it's right at the point coming through, and it's not. It's down a little bit. I don't like that. Okay, I'm going to try again. The back will lie to you sometimes. So go where you think it should be. Oh, see, that's not good. That's way off. Maybe I can even look from the front and do it. Oh, come on. Nope, gotta do it from the back. I'll take it, all right? Then I'm going to go in exactly there on the other side. Okay, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna press down. And, and see, if you were using the um, flower pin, it would be wobbling here. So that's why it's not my preferred pin at this point. And then I'm gonna drop in a pin a 16th of an inch before, a 16th of an inch after, but wait, I am gonna check right now. And I'm gonna make sure that it all looks good. And it all looks pretty darn good, okay? Now the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to lengthen my stitch length and I am just going to sew across the middle so that if I did do it wrong, it's no big deal. You just take it out. So I, I don't know, I put it up to about a five or 5.90. Note that this pin is staying in. Okay, and let me see if I can get this down any closer. That's, well, that's pretty good. And what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna hold this pin and I'm gonna go very, hold on. I love live demos. Did that unthread? What the heck happened? I gotta bring that up, you guys. Oh, perfect. <laughs> well, let's, <laughs> perfect. What I would, what I can, is I'm gonna leave that in there, and then right before I get to it, I pull it out, okay? And the reason I'm not freaking out too much is because these stitches are so dang big so we can check and see. You wanna leave that pin in till the last minute. And then, um, I don't like it. I, this is off, okay? So look at that, how easy is that? I wonder if the pin hadn't fallen out. Oh, here's the other problem that you're stepping into when you're using stark fabrics like this is every single little piecing error is going to show. So that's why I'm taking this little extra precautionary step. And I actually, this stitch length is too much. I'm gonna take it down to a 5.0. Put it in. See, I'm just doing it again in case you missed it the first time. <laughs> and we're gonna run a few minutes late. I apologize, you guys. I kind of thought that might happen because we're covering a lot. Get in there, you crazy little bird. All right. Okay, that looks good. I will tell you this as if it's any excuse. Um, I am sewing in the dark so that you can see. So, see how I'm holding it? I'm gonna pull it out right now. I can see the hole that this thing came out of. Let's take a look, see? I, I remember doing this halfway through making this border. Yes, I will take that. So I'm going to now do a regular stitch, if you want. Drop in a little bit of glue stick right up here. And a little bit of glue stick right down there. It helps hold it. And off we go. I'm watching that line right there. You know what I, you know what I can be when I grow up? I can be a stunt sewer. <laughs> Right over that same steam. Yay. Say a little prayer for me. Yeah, it 
Yeah, that one's a little short, but I can live with it. So then what you can do is you can break, where's the seam ripper? You've got threads going this way and you've got threads going this way. On this particular thread going this way, just give it a little clip, click with your seam ripper if it doesn't do it by itself. Here. And then you can twirl this sucker. And the problem is I am doing this in the dark. So it really is easier than that. There you go. Twirl it. And then when you press it, you go like that. And you've got a baby pinwheel in the middle. All right. So that's how easy these pinwheels are. Let's see. I've got some questions here and I want to go back to this camera. Pre-wash the fabric. I probably would. I honestly probably would. The other thing, oh, I see something that you're going to want to not do. I just thought of something here. Do you need to take the sew steady? What are the strips? The strips are all cut at two, two and a half, three. You get it, the instructions at thequiltshow.com by going to learn, projects, view this project, and then scroll down. Um, are all, okay, two different threads, where, okay, hold on, okay, let's look at this, um, how to decide on color placement for the background, I didn't think about it, I just sewed it, you know, uh, in this row, it had to be all the ones that were cut at three inches, and then I just put them up, you know, and if I didn't like, if something, like if this, butted up to another the same yellow then I just moved it to another place so not a lot of great thought went into this I liked the green because it reminds me of grass all right so are all this is it are this are all strips one length across the quilt no they're all different but they end up at what did I say they needed to be wide 40 inches wide 40 and a half raw now I do have something tricky going on I have two things tricky going on I decided for fun to throw in four gray and white pinwheels. I thought get my chair out of the way. I thought that would be a great way to have your eye go around the whole surface. And then the other thing was I'm gonna have this this birdhouse uh, stand go on the outside, but these ones tuck under. So I'm going to take it back. Maybe you do everything but the bottom row and sew it on and set that aside because I tucked these in. Or when it's time to do this, you could pick it apart and stick it in too. So I just did that because I thought that's kind of uncomfortable, you know? Let's see. Um, how? Why two different thread weights? Okay. I use on the top when I'm piecing, and we are piecing right now, my 60 weight, my 60 weight thread with quilter select. It is a cotton, no, it is a polyester core with cotton, uh, long, Egyptian long staple cotton around the outside. It's finer than your 50 weight, your um, Orophil, your Superior, it, that's 50, 60 is just that much finer. And the finer the thread you have, the more, um, the better your piecing will become. I was shocked, okay? Then I always use 80 weight on my bobbin. It's a polyester. I used to use a 60 weight polyester on my bobbin. I think I have no problems mixing, mixing uh, fibers. And then when we came up with the 80 weight, it got that much better. The reason I use the 60 weight on top when I'm piecing some people use the 80 in the bobbin and the 80 on top, but because they're both polyester, they get slippery. And so sometimes the ends become undone, all right? Also, the uh, 60 on top, it, the fiber of it, uh, that's what I'm saying, yeah, the fiber of it, of the cotton helps grab the bottom. One last pretty darn important thing. When you sew on this, and I said it once, I'm gonna say it again, you're going to stay stitch around the edge, just regular stitch length, less than a quarter inch. So that as you're wrestling this alligator under your sewing machine, this does not start coming apart. Ask me how I know. 
all right? So that is a pretty important step. So let me see if we have any other questions here. I'm going down to the, oh, I can't find the question area. Oh, there we go. There we go. So, all right. All right. Is there anything else I need to say? You guys are awesome. You have, has this not been a year or what? And I don't know about you guys, but also I blink and there we are. It, the year's over. I just had a birthday. Yay. Yay. Birthdays are good. Um, yeah, beats the options, right? Oh, pre-wash fabric. I did not pre-wash the fabric. If you do, the fabric that I would be suspect to me would be the black. Okay, that would be the one I want to test. I don't worry about... I, I, the main thing I worry about is color bleed. I did not wash mine. So, you know, I just got to say a prayer. But I also know if it runs, I can use Senthropol and I can get out everything. So, okay, guys, um, I will see you Friday and we'll get into the different ways to applique. And there's a reason we have not put all the shapes on the site. I don't want you jamming through this, guys. I want you to try different styles, different techniques, because for, for the flowers, I can think of at least three ways I'm going to show you how to do it. And you've got to figure out what fits on your foot the best, okay? So we will see you later. Have a great one. And thanks for all the questions and all that. Bye-bye.